welcome to Harvesters Kids Online Service! Yay! I am Omotala and I'm super excited to be here today. How are you doing? How is mom, dad and your siblings? I trust you're all doing well. I'm also good, you know. If this is your first time joining us today, this is for you. I am so glad you are here today. Please ask mom or dad to text new to the number showing on your screen and you might just be our winner for this week. Before we go on with our service friends, it's time to count our three famous things. This time, the Abraham's way. We're going to count one, two, three. Like we're counting stars in the sky. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three. Well done. I'll give you some time to get all that done and I'll be right back. prayer posture comfortable for you. Make sure you close your eyes and repeat these words after me. Father, thank you for today. Thank you because this is a day you have made. For me to enjoy your promises and blessings, I am blessed because Abraham's blessings are mine. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Shout aloud, Amen! Amen! God bless you. Please take your seat.
remember the first time I heard about Abraham. It seems just like yesterday. I was about your age at that time. Do you want to hear my story? I can't hear you. Do you want to hear my story? Okay, I hear you now. And I'll tell you my story. So, one day, I was at home. And my dad called me. Omotola! Again, he called me. Omotola! And again, he called me. Omotola! And he called me several times after that. I'm sure you are wondering why my dad had to call me more than three times. You may be thinking, was I outside playing games with friends? Was I in the bathroom? Was I sleeping? Was I playing a video game by myself or watching a movie? The possibilities are endless, but doesn't change the fact that for such a call, there should have been a response, hmm? Yes, a response was my dad's expectation. But not just any response, friend. What do you guys think? Which of the following responses should have been the right one to my dad's call? One, I'm hungry, dad. Two, I'm going out, dad. Three, I'm not coming, dad. Four, I'm heading to school now. Five, don't call me, dad. Six, call me again, dad. Seven, yes, dad. I'm sure you would agree with me that yes, dad is the right response. So you see, a response is not the only expectation, but also the right response. What else would you have expected me to do? Okay, you are correct. You would have expected me to go where my dad was, right? So friend, in addition to the right response, is the right action. You wouldn't have expected me to remain where I was after saying, yes, dad, would you? No. So let's go back to my story. Well, I am not proud of myself because I didn't answer my dad. And that was simply a bad behavior. So do not copy that, friend. So my dad came to me and asked me a lot of questions. <laughs> It seemed like forever, and I thought I should have answered the call after all. But then again, he told me the most beautiful story ever. And I thought to myself, it probably was good I didn't answer the call, you know? So, he told me about Abraham, who lived long, long ago. He said, one day, God asked Abraham, to leave his home, his father, mother, siblings, to go to a strange land he did not know. At this point, I said to my dad, God called Abraham and asked him to do that? That is way too difficult. More difficult than leaving the video game I was playing. I'm sure Abraham didn't answer God's call. And if he did answer God's call, I'm sure he didn't go to a strange land. Then my dad smiled at me, took my hands and looked into my eyes. At this point, I knew I was really, really, really in for a surprise. And my dad told me that Abraham answered God's call. Not only did he answer the call, he took the right action by going to the strange land. Even though it wasn't easy for Abraham to do, he chose to obey God. That day, friend, I learned a couple of lessons. I learned that a response is required to a call. I learned that not only is a response required, but the right response. 
I also learned that the right action should follow. When these three are done, the action is called obedience. And most importantly, friends, I learned that I should obey God just the way Abraham obeyed God. I want you to watch this video and I'll be right back. Abraham and his wife Sarai lived in Canaan. Abraham was a good man. He obeyed God and was kind to his fellow beings. One day, God appeared to Abraham when he was praying. Abraham, Abraham. What? Who is that? God, is that you? Yes, it is me. I have something to tell you. Tell me, Lord, what can I do for you? I want you to leave this land, leave the house of your father, and go to a place far from here. But why, God? Where am I going? I will guide you to a place where you will find fortune and riches. You will be known as a great man, and people will remember you for a long time. I will bless the people who bless you and curse the people who curse you. Very well, my lord. As you wish. I have complete faith in you. Abraham started his journey to the promised land with his wife and his nephew, Lot. They also took with them all their belongings which included their cattle and horses. He also carried bags of gold and silver which he had collected over his life. It was a long and difficult journey. They had to cross deserts and barren land with very little food or water. After many, many days, Abraham and his family finally reached the promised land in Canaan. Abraham. This is where you will live with your family. Thank you, my lord. Thank you for guiding us to this beautiful land. Abraham's wife, Sarai, was a beautiful young woman who was very kind and good-hearted. She loved Abraham very much. Abraham also loved his wife and they were happy together. Sarai understood that Abraham was close to God and followed whatever he said. She trusted God just like Abraham and prayed with him. Lot also loved his uncle and listened to whatever he was told. After many years, a severe famine struck Canaan. Soon, there was very little water for Abraham's family. <laughs> Animals were starving and the river was dried up. Uncle, this drought has no sign of ending. We are running short of food. Even the river has completely dried up. The animals are starving and they will not last much longer than a few days. What shall we do? Do not worry, Lot. We have placed our trust in God. He will not abandon us. Have faith. Well, we can't stay on here any longer. We must at least go on search for food and clean water further towards Egypt. She is right, uncle. We cannot just go on waiting for something to happen. We must do something. Hmm. <sighs> Let me see. I am going to pray now. God will give me an answer. That night, Abraham got an answer from God. The next day morning, Abraham woke up and went to give Sarai the news. God has answered me, Sarai. We will take the animals and travel towards Egypt. We will get food grains from there. Very well. I will tell Lot to get ready for the journey. And so, and yet again, Abraham and his family set out on a journey in search of a better life. They walked miles and miles to the desert with whatever animals were left. 
But they continued their journey and finally they reached the border of Egypt. Abraham was worried for his wife. She was a very beautiful young woman and he was a very old man. He was not sure how the Egyptians would treat them. We are almost there, Sarai. Before we enter Egypt, we need to have a plan. I am worried about you. I fear the Egyptians will take you away from me. I cannot let that happen. We will tell the gods that you are my sister. That way, they will not harm any of us. And we will have a better chance of getting what we came for and leaving safely. Very well, Abraham. So be it. I will say you are my brother. That was very interesting. You should follow Abraham's example. Obey God. Obey his word, the Bible. Obey your parents and your teachers.
It's time for our memory verse. Please stand so we can learn it and do it together. The first time, you watch me attentively. The second time, I want you to repeat after me. And finally, the third time, we do it all together. Are you ready? Let's go! Our memory verse is from Galatians 3 verse 29. And it says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. This second time, you repeat after me. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Also, this final time, we'll do it together on the count of three. One, two, three. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Great job, kids. Keep working on this verse. Also, remember to read your notes during the week. I had such an amazing time with you today. And see you next week as we continue to dig further into the character of Abraham. Have an amazing week. Bye.